guys. I hope you were doing well today. And I think uh, this most likely is the last class for the day, right? For you guys? Okay. Um, yes, but yeah, for this afternoon, we'll be discussing some bits and pieces of what we have already uh, discussed before. So it's like a review and we will be connecting it with uh, history itself. But before we get there, let's deal first with the sources of history. Okay, so I will be sharing my slide with you guys. Okay, it's not appearing on my end. One moment. Okay. Here you go. Okay, let me double check. Oh, there it is. Excuse me. Okay, and the weather doesn't seem to be nice. I think it's gonna rain hard later on. Okay, so here we go. What is history? Okay, so we already know what history is. It is the study of the past. But there's still more to that. Okay, so history is not just a list of names, dates, places, and important events. Okay, just knowing and memorizing facts. It's not history. Now, when it comes to history, it is a historian's duty to draw insights from the ideas and realities that have just shaped the lives of men and women and the society. And in understanding these ideas, a historian can comprehend how situations happen. Okay, identify their elements and think how these situations can solve today's predicaments and how it can help plan for the future. Well, as early as now, you could already claim yourselves to be historians because for sure you've already done this kind of procedure. Okay, like uh, in identifying or finding out what happened within the day. Okay, so if you're probably you lost something or you misplaced it, you retrace back the steps that you, you know, you passed by the things that you did. Okay, so that's part of uh, history, trying to figure out where you left, say, that uh, favorite ball pen of yours or where you left your phone and then when was the last time you saw it. Okay. In order to understand why you left it there in the first place. Okay. Now, history is the study of beliefs and desires, practices, and institution of human beings. History becomes an active factor in the study of Philippine society. Because we never really had any written account of our own Philippine history. We based our Philippine history according to the written materials of the colonizers like that of Pigafetta if you could still remember our previous discussion and if without that historical account then we won't have anything to start with okay because we would only have our own oral history which won't be backed up by uh, hard evidence okay so meaning to say if we have this oral history passed down from one generation to the next the written account that Pigafetta did somewhat uh, authenticates okay what has been you know told through oral communication about our history like the culture of the people the kind of living condition that they have during that time how they dress up what they were doing okay at the time that the spaniards arrived how they were Okay, how they were, how they treated the people. So eventually, uh, with the hospitality that the Filipinos are very known, I mean, are well known for, do na natin maano, ma-verify na, uy, since pala the time of the arrival of the Spaniards, Filipinos have already portrayed this kind of 
attitude, yung ano, hospitality, yun. Diba? Now, anyway, it includes a look into the development of Philippine culture through time, especially with the influences of the colonial period that would eventually shape the present Philippine identity. Okay, so an examination of the past can tell us a great deal about how we came to be who we are. It means looking at the roots, modern, uh, roots of modern institutions, ideas, values, and problems. So looking at the past teaches us to see the world through different eyes, appreciating the diversity of human perceptions, beliefs, and cultures. Different and a new perspective will enable us to analyze critically the present context of society and beings. Okay? Kasi nga, uh, with that account that uh, Figa Feta wrote, that is on a European's point of view. As for a Filipino's point of view, this type of writing only came into existence at the later uh, century. Okay? So far, I think. Uh, the only well-known account of a Filipino point of view that I could recall is the one written by Jose Rizal himself when he annotated the Successos de las Islas Filipinas, which was written by Antonio de Morga back in the 16th century. And uh, during the late 1800s, okay, when Rizal went back to London on his second travel, that was the time that he annotated because okay, it's time to, you know, put some updates with what Antonio de Morga has written. Kasi nga, para ba siyang time immemorial na Filipinos have been dubbed as backward, ignorant, okay? And it somehow belittles how we view our history. Because in the first place, we weren't like that. We already have a culture, we already have a society, a system, a form of government. We also have a social class, okay? But then the Europeans viewed it differently because it is something that is, say, far-fetched from the kind of society that they have. So meaning, hindi ka pareho sa kanila na well-dressed, okay, well-dressed, uh, they have a... Uh, system, they have this hierarchy, okay, they also have this culture. So, pagkakita nila sa mga Filipinos, when they arrived, uy, half naked, okay, half naked ang women. So, it's like, oh, they're so very primitive. And we already have our type of clothing, okay, and the men were also half naked, may ano lang, may cover lang sa, ano, Baba ang parte ng katawan nila with the use of bahag. Same way with women. And their breasts were showing off. So it's something new for them. Kasi nga, the way they view advancement in society is siyempre well-dressed. E di naman nila in-anticipate the kind of uh, climate that we have. Okay? So if we dress up like them, so you could just imagine, when we were colonized by the Spaniards and we tried to be like the, the uh, Americans, we rather tried to be the, you know, a Spanish version of a Filipina here in the Philippines. Balot din. Could you just imagine how the women during that time have felt in a tropical climate? Diba? Ang init ng ano, ng, ng, ang init ng ano, ng clothing na yun sa katawan. Balot na balot eh. Okay. Anyway, so for the word history, let's look into where it came from, history and science. So history came from the Greek word istoia, meaning learning. A systematic account of a set of natural phenomena, whether or not chronological factoring was a factor in the account, according to Aristotle. Now, it is also a science. Okay which came from a Latin word, scientia. Accounts of phenomena, especially human affairs, in chronological order, the past of mankind, the common definition of history. It refers to either the events of the past or verbal accounts of these events. 
it is a science because you have to arrange it in chronological order so that magkaroon tayo ng narrative. So it's like gathering up different information from different sources, okay, and then coming up with a story. Because if you just leave it as how it is, then patak-patak din yung information mo. You won't be able to come up with something. Okay, that's why history is a science much as it also is an art. Because it requires creativity and it requires a sense of yeah patience, just, just like an artist. Because you have to make sure all the events are in order so that you will have a perfect narrative that will form the Philippine history. Now, historians engage in research, gathering information from oral or written sources, then recorded its findings in a unified narrative. Yun. That's why if you would read about Philippine history, napakaraming sources, and you could not find everything all in one ano, uh, reading material. Okay. Now, this process set apart ancient historians from storytellers. Okay, because for storytellers, it's usually uh, more on oral history. Okay, for an ancient historian, mga written accounts to siya of what really happened in the past. But the, since we, are, we don't have that kind of information, okay, you know, the wear and tear of... Uh, materials through time so even if our historians wrote it on a papyrus or on a tablet or on a leaf or on the back of a tortoise or in a tusk or kung ano man yan magdideteriorate din yan siya over time that's why it needs to be rewritten just like how the Europeans did in order to preserve Okay, the history. Okay. As sa ating wala eh, we did all those things through uh, oral history by way of storytelling, our histories and myths, our legends. Okay. And in most everything that Filipinos would do, there is music. Okay, or a song accompanied by it. Yeah, nga, meron tayong song for lovers, song for courtship, song for uh, mo dito? Um, farming, meron ding song for harvest. So sa lahat ng ginagawa natin, may mga songs doon na incorporated. And that is part of uh, oral history. Okay, storytellers. Okay. Now, ancient historiography was in fact closer to storytelling than modern history writing. Okay, now, for the sources, you have here primary, okay, first-hand, secondary, and second-hand. But all of them points into one thing, source, a person, publication, or object that gives information. So the source here is the main thing the people of the country, say, the Philippine culture, perhaps, okay? So for primary, not made or coming from something else, it is original. So meaning the written account of Pigafetta himself. It did not come from someone else or something else. He wrote it himself, okay? He wrote it, he wrote it as according to how he saw, how he observed the current situation of the Philippines when they arrived. For secondary, this came from or created using an original source. Say, for example, uh, in the next presentation that I will be discussing to you, Pigafetta also wrote down some native words okay, that he learned from the Filipinos. So that's a secondary source coming from the natives themselves. Okay? Original source ang Filipinos. And then you have here firsthand coming directly from the original source. Okay, secondhand, not original, taken from someone or something else. But all of them points to one thing, and that is the source itself. Okay, so for sources, you have here primary sources. They are considered as contemporary accounts of an event or events personally written or narrated by an individual person 
who directly experienced or participated in the said event. Okay? Like Bigafita himself, he is the primary source because he has direct experience with the situation. Say, in the Battle of Mactan, who has more credibility in talking about it than Pigafeta, Pigafeta himself? Kasi nakita niya eh. And he was there. He is a witness. Hindi yung ay sinabi ni, ano, ni Juan kay Pigafeta, hindi ganon. Otherwise, that would become a second-hand source. Okay? For secondary sources, they serve as interpretations or readings of primary sources. Usually, the author of a piece incorporates his or her personal insights and interpretations, thus detaching the original value of the component of the subjects being discussed. Now, these sources usually contain analysis of primary sources by experts, academicians, and professionals. Okay, so let's skip that one. Primary sources, and uh, examples of them are photographs that may reflect social conditions of historical realities and everyday life. Sketches and drawings, paintings, artwork, yon. they indicate the condition of the life of societies in the past. That's why if you would appreciate a painting, do not appreciate it at your point of view in the current situation. Otherwise, uh, hindi, mo, hindi ka talaga makaka-relate doon. Okay, kasi iba-iba yung genre ng painting eh. Rather, appreciate it uh, at the point when the painting was made and who made it. Okay, the artist himself. Okay, now you also have here the drawings. Yan. All of them indicate a condition of societies in the past. Old maps that may reveal how space geog and geography were used to emphasize trade routes, uh, structural buildup, and etc. Okay? Kaya nga, when you look at old maps, nagbabago din yung mga old maps. Okay? So if before we, the Philippines wasn't in the map, but when we were discovered yun, napunta na tayo sa mapa. Nalagay na tayo, nandun pala ang Pilipinas, and it exists. Okay, you also have cartoons for political expressions or propaganda. Material evidence of prehistoric past like drawings, cave drawings, old syllabaries, and ancient writings. Okay, so the only example I could give you on this was our Alibata. Oh, yeah, Alibata, which would mean that we already have a system of writing even before the Spaniards came. And that's not what an uncivilized civilization would have. Okay, so meaning we were really organized during that time. Di lang nila naintindihan. Okay? Because it's something different. It's something, uh, probably something new for them. Okay? And then for, yeah, writings, you also have the Laguna Copper Plate inscription, which was written in Malay Polynesian language. Okay? So ancient. Okay, next primary source, statistical tables, graphs, and charts. Oral history or recordings by electronic means of accounts of eyewitness or participants. The recordings are then transcribed and used for research. Another primary source is published and unpublished primary documents, eyewitness accounts, and other written sources. Okay. Now, for secondary sources, they serve as interpretations or readings of primary sources. Usually, the author of a piece incorporates his or her personal insights and interpretations, thus detaching the original value of the component of the subject being discussed. So, these sources usually contain analysis of primary sources by experts, academicians, and professionals. Okay, like when I say na... Yeah, could you just imagine when the mass was held, how did the Filipinos even understand what they were getting themselves into? Oh, so that's already my analysis. Okay, so it's, it's driving away the very essence wherein the first mass was made in Limasawa and Filipinos were there. So meaning, it's like, uh, nagdagdag ako na information based on my own analysis. So, nawala na yung essence because we are moving away from what really happened. Okay? Uh, the testimony of anyone who is not an eyewitness, that is, of one who was not present at the event of which he tells. 
Yes. Okay, other secondary sources, you have books, articles, scholarly journals that had interpreted primary sources or had used them to discuss certain subjects of history, journals, reviews, or another form of secondary sources. You also have conference papers, documentaries. Okay, they can also be based on interpretations of other secondary sources or a combination of primary and secondary sources. Now, many historical researchers also bank on secondary sources to get different uh, perspectives on a particular topic. Now, relying too much on secondary sources may blur out the actual details of a particular historical event. That's why if you want to understand Philippine history, you do not use just one uh, source. You have to, you know, uh, research on other sources in order for you to have a strong foundation wherein you could base your analysis on. Okay. Now, for the questions in evaluating the validity and credibility of sources of historical accounts, uh, you have to ask questions like, how did the author know about the given details? Okay, like, for example, Pigafetta. Pigafetta was there. He was present. He witnessed everything that happened. Was the author present? At the event, yes, he was there. How soon was the author able to gather the details of the events? Right after, uh, exactly, just about exactly that the event was happening. He was writing it down, okay? And he was also making some sketches. Okay, where did the information come from? The information came from at the time they arrived here in the Philippines, in the island of Summer. Is it a personal experience, an eyewitness account, or a report made by another person? It is a personal experience, which was directly experienced by Pigafetta himself. Okay. Did the author conclude based on a single source on many sources of evidence? Like, for example, uh, what happened in the Battle of Mactan? Oh, yun. Uh, Pigafetta concluded that one of the men threw a spear okay, at the face of, in front of the face of uh, Magellan. Okay? And other, the other men of Lapu-Lapu came in to attack. And Magellan kept on looking back at them. Okay? So according to Figafeta, Magellan was looking into if they were already in the boat. Okay? Pero... Kung titingnan mo, it could have been a different type. Maybe Magellan was asking for their help but could not do so. Kasi may, nasa barko na sila eh. Okay, so we don't know. So that's um, how Pigafetta concluded the whole event happened. And of course, the Spaniards lost that battle of Mactan. Okay, that's why they fled and left the Philippines. Now, if the evaluation of an available source shows any indication that is an interpretative work rather than a factual first-hand account, it is considered as a secondary source. Now, in conducting historical research, it is important to identify whether the available sources are primary or secondary to determine how reliable and helpful these sources are. And according to Garrigan, Points of inquiries to evaluate the authenticity of primary source, you have to take into consideration the date. When was it produced? It was produced at the time of their arrival on March 16, 1521. Localization, where did it originate? It originated in the island of Samar, where they first landed on. Authorship, who wrote it? It was written by Pigafetta himself. Analysis, what pre-existing material served as basis for its production? Okay. Saan niya nilagay? Saan niya sinulat? Okay. What type of material? Of course, Bigafetta wrote it in his journal or in his uh, travelogue. As for integrity, was what was its original form? Okay. Uh, yung ano, yung type of journal, anong materials ang ginamit niya, the type of ink, the type of uh, paper. Yan. Because iba yung, ano, iba yung make pagkagawa ng ano, material during the 16th century compared at present. Okay, credibility. What is the evidential value of its content? 
Okay, Pigafetta was there who witnessed firsthand all of the accounts that happened in history. Now, absence of the primary documents that can attest to the accuracy of any historical claim is really a problem in the extensive study of history. In that sense, the significance of the secondary sources should not be discredited. It readily it is readily available in print and in digital repositories. Meaning to say, these secondary sources are also important. Okay, that's why we should give it some credit. Now, according to Gottschalk, when it comes to secondary sources, they must only be used for one deriving the setting wherein the contemporary evidence will fit in the grand narrative. Second, getting leads of other bibliographic data. Okay. Kung saan pwede pa natin maka, uh, pwede pa tayong kumuha ng information with regards to history. Okay. Acquiring quotations or citations from contemporary or other sources. Deriving interpretations with a view of testing and improving them but not accepting them outright as truth. Okay. Now, according to Howell and Prevenier, preconditions before any source can be considered as an evidence in historical arguments. One, you must, it must be comprehensible at the most basic level of vocabulary, language, and handwriting because this will set the tone of its acceptability. Second, the source must be carefully located in accordance with the place and time, young author, composer, writer, and the location where it was produced. That, that, is other, uh, that is another way of checking the authenticity and accuracy. Now, the authenticity of the source must always be checked and counter-checked before being accepted as credible source in any historical findings. Subtle details such as quality of paper, yung earlier, ink or watermarks. Okay? Kasi nga, baka ano, forgery, forgery siya. So, if it's a forgery, we cannot accept that as a verifiable fact. Okay. If you will put it down and then forgery pala and put in the will include that as part of your research then masisira yung ano yung gawa mo because you cannot accept that. Okay? Now possibility of forgery and misleading evaluate further in terms of internal criteria. This was according to Howell and Prevenier. Now some other things that you have to consider when it comes to the sources the genealogy of the document the genealogy of the document refers to the development of the document. Okay, is it an original copy? Is it a copy? Or is it a copy of a copy? Machine copy. The genesis of the document, which includes the situations and the authorities during the document's production. Okay, or if it's a signed document, who signed it? Okay, is it a person in authority or is it a person, an agent of a person in authority or sino man yan? Hindi siya gawa-gawa lang na personality. Okay, Orig originality of the document includes the nature of the document, whether it is an eye or ear witness account or merely passing of existing information. Yan. Interpretation of the document pertains to the deducing meaning from the document. And then you have the authorial or yeah, authorial authority of the document, which refers to the relationship between the document subject matter and the author. Competence of the observer, which refers to the author's capabilities and qualifications to critically comprehend and report information. And lastly, you have trustworthiness of the observer. Yeah, if you are a writer or even a more journalist, if they have a history of yeah, making false news, then that kind of uh, thing will be attached to their name all throughout. So who would believe them? Diba? That's why a writer or an observer or a historian or a journalist needs to report only actual news. Okay, facts. Okay. So this refers to the author's integrity, whether he or she fabricates or reports truthfully. Now, in general, the reliability of primary sources is assessed on how these sources are directly related and closely connected to the time of the events they pertain to. Okay, meaning to say, hindi yung nakita mo ngayon, sinulat mo 10 years after. So, 
syempre, the the information would have been a bit blurry. Okay? And most likely, you would have forgotten some important details. That's why as uh, as a historian or as a, like, big of himself, as a chronicler, chronicler, yan. He was writing as according to the exact time, date, and place that the event was happening. Yun. The reliability of the secondary source depends on the elapsed time from the date of the event to the date of their creation. Para magkaroon siya ng reliability and accuracy. Okay? So, I'll move on to my next slide and that is uh, about yeah, some informations that we will have to revisit about uh, Magellan. <laughs> Okay, so I'm now sharing my slide with you guys. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so you have here the understanding perspective on history. So when it comes to perspective, it refers to the point of view of the said writer who was a witness to the event. Just like you, once we get to study more about our Philippine history, you will be able to build up your own perspective. Okay, that some things that you have learned in your elementary and probably during the high school years are, say, not complete in its own Face. There is still so much more to learn and understand about the Philippine history. Okay, so though historical sources are important in the writing of history, the historian is careful in using these sources as the writer may be biased or prejudiced on the subject that he or she is discuss discussing. Different participants also write their accounts and can give varied opinion and statements about a single event. In any case, reading a historical event from the points of view of all sides will enable us to form our own studies about the said events. Okay? Now, for the historical context, one of the benefits of the Europeans okay, from the crusade was the discovery of some products that were not available in their home country. Okay? Some of these products include porcelain, silk, incense, herbs, perfumes, fabrics, carpets, spices, and other oriental products. Like in the Philippines, they discovered tobacco. They also discovered sugar. Yeah. The highest production of sugar was, I think, here in the Philippines. Okay? Cuba also has that. Pero as far as I've read more on history, Payo yung ano eh, the Philippines was their, let's just say, milking cow. Yan. That's why we were highly prized by the Spaniards. But if I would compare the experience of the Philippines to that of Cuba, medyo ano, medyo, let's just say, they were a bit more brutal in Cuba compared to that here in the Philippines. So medyo subtle pa lang ng konti on how they treated the natives. Okay. Now, spices became the most expensive and in-demand commodity among Europeans because of their numerous uses, such, such as food, preservation, flavor, enhancement, and even medicine. Okay, now, Asian goods reached Europe through either via Silk Road or the Arabian-Italian trade route. Okay, or route. Both routes are expensive and oftentimes disrupted by wars, natural calamities, and bandits. The closing of the land route of the spice trade with the conquest of the Ottoman Empire of Constantinople in 1453 forced European kingdoms to look for ways to purchase spices directly from the source. That is why exploration began. Okay, now lang ma-explore ang Portuguese. Sumunod na lang ang Spain. Nainggit eh. Okay, so they explored the ocean to look for a way to the famed spice islands. 
or what we now know as Moluccas Island. Okay, so you have here Prince Henry, the navigator of Portugal, put a maritime school, the trained sailors who would later discover an eastern sea route going to the Spice Island and other Southeast Asian via Atlantic Ocean and Indian route. Now, this route enabled them to trade directly with the producers of spices and other Oriental goods. Okay, so for the numerous income, uh, economic benefits it gave Portugal, okay, it made other monarch, monarchs rather envious and prompted them to search for a new trade route to Asia or trade route. I had to double check how that is being pronounced, but either way, a route or route is still correct. But in most uh, information, they would pronounce it. Uh, they would pronounce it as route. Okay. Anyway, now this led to the discovery of many territories previously known to the Europeans, though inhabited already, known to other races. Okay. For in addition to that, the rise of Spain as a world power. Because Spain during the 15th century actually became a superpower. Just like how powerful the U.S. is, ganun siya ka powerful before because they were the ones who started or rather flourished, made the navigation flourish. Mga British, pati na yung Portuguese and uh, Spain. But Spain was the most powerful because of uh, the islands that it kept as their colony. They were all rich in spices, especially sugar. The Europeans got hooked on sugar. That's why during the time of Queen Elizabeth, everything that she ate has sugar in it. But of course, nobody knew about the consequences of eating too much sugar. That's why history says that Elizabeth's teeth were completely deteriorated because of sugar itself. Okay. Anyway... There the, uh, in 1469, you have the marriage of Queen Isabella of Castile and King Ferdinand II of Aragon. The victory of the Catholic monarchs over Moors in the Battle of Granada in 1492. And then you have Spain started to explore their economic options outside the Iberian Peninsula. Inspired by the success, success of Portugal, they aspired to have a fair share in the spice trade. Yeah, gumaya sila. That's why... The world was divided into two. So, the east went to Portugal, and then the western part went to Spain, so that they won't be waging war with each other, discovering the islands that were already discovered by the Portuguese. Okay. Now, they financed the transatlantic voyages of Christopher Columbus, 1492 to 1502 which resulted in the discovery of the territories on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. And then you have the Magellan Elcano Expedition. Okay, decades later, the Spanish monarch also supported the plan of Ferdinand Magellan. Because Ferdinand Magellan is a Portuguese, but he was not supported. That's why he went to the King of Spain. Okay, so he had his opportunity there in being a captain of a ship, being an explorer. Okay, so they sailed westward in a proposal that Portugal refused to finance, but Spain openly did so. Uh, yeah, I, I remember now. It was the papal bull that divided the world for Portugal and Spain. Now, the Magellan Econo expedition, in August 2015, they left the port of San Lucar de Barrameda in Seville. They have with them 270 men of different nationalities. Five ships left in Spain and only Victoria returned. Trinidad was captured by the Portuguese. So the objective of this expedition was to search for a new maritime path to the Spice Islands that would not violate Spain's treaty with Portugal. So kung ano yung trade route ng Portugal, hindi na susundan yun. They would go around it. Uh, true enough. Okay, That's how smart Spain was. Anyway, they came upon the island named Zam, uh, Zamal or Samar at dawn on Saturday, March 16, 1521. Filipinos were hospitable and made a cordial exchange of goods with the locals. Some traded goods with them. Some Filipino even converted to Christianity. Now, here comes Lapu-Lapu, the chieftain of Mactan, who refused to trade with the Spaniards. And he was the very first person who refused 
the presence of the Spaniards here in the Philippines. Okay, not much is known about Lapu Lapu. That's why uh, there, we, I mean, there's not so much to tell about him. Exactly, he's a chief. Okay, a chieftain. He was very brave. He has this, uh, you know, strong body who would resist the rule of the Spaniards and. Ano naman ang laban natin sa Spaniards? They have all the rifles, the right armory, and we only have our bolos, our uh, itak and all. But then, nothing beats the bravery of the Filipinos. Kasi yung nangyari dun sa Battle of Mactan was also quite the same thing. That I mean, it's not the same scenario, the same situation, but yung, ano, yung mga gamit nila, okay? I mean, if you have read the Battle of Mactan, the natives even... Uh, participated already because part of the tactic that the um, that the Spaniards did was to burn the houses. Okay, so nakilaban na rin yung mga babae, gamit yung mga any kind of material that they could grab on. Yan ginamit na nila. So it's it's the same thing that happened during the you know the Philippine Revolution and the same thing during the Phil American War. We did not have the right armory, but we did have the, you know, the bravery of a Filipino. Fight to death talaga. Okay? Oh, we can't do away with the casualties. Ganun naman talaga when it comes to war. Okay? Pero yun nga, ang iba magalit ang Pinoy eh. Okay, lalo na ang Visayan. And that was the very first encounter of the Spaniards. Okay, so... Of course, the Spaniards, despite of their superiority, lost the battle and one of the casualties was Magellan. Now, Juan Sebastian Elcano took over the command with Victoria and Trinidad and left the Philippines. So, September 7, 1521, Elcano and 17 survivors arrived in Spain on board the ship Victoria. Okay, so, one of the survivors was Antonio Pigafetta, the assistant of Magellan. He kept a journal that became the main source of what we know about the first encounter of the Spaniards and the Filipinos. So, so yun, 15, uh, 1521, March 16, discovery of the Philippines and then the place they landed, Samar. So let's look into the short background of uh, Pigafetta. Okay, Pigafetta was born around 1490 in the town of Vicenza, Venice, Italy. The eldest son of Giovanni Pigafetta, two second wife, Angela Zoga. Pigafetta studied astronomy, geography, and cartography. So he really came from a, an educated uh, line of family. He worked in the ships owned by the Knights of Rhodes. Now, he became a member of the delegation of messenger Francisco Ceragati, the papal noon show to Spain in 1519. He presented his credentials to Magellan and to the Casa de la Contratación office in charge of voyages to the New World. Yeah. So he was one of the sobresaliente or super numeraris, yeah, men coming from prominent families. After the expedition with uh, Magellan and his men, yun nga, one of the survivors, okay, he joined the Knight of St. John of Jerusalem and he died sometime in 1534. Now, according to writings, yung account niya with his travel, in, uh, with, his travel with Magellan and his man was one of the longest. Okay, and most comprehensive that he wrote compared to other accounts, I mean, other expeditions that he went to. Okay, now, Pigafetta's writings recounted the individual fates of the five ships that comprised the expedition. You have Trinidad, San Antonio, Concepcion, Santiago, and Victoria. Of course, it also narrated how... Uh, the unforeseen problems and challenges were met by these uh, men. Shortage of food, various types of diseases, the crews, lack of confidence in Magellan's leadership, the hostile attitude of the people they encountered. Yun. Kasi iba-iba yung type of people yung na-encounter nila eh. Okay? Yeah, story also goes that Wala namang masyadong diseases dito sa Pilipinas. So, upon the arrival of the Spaniards, uh, 
they brought with them diseases. Kaya ayun, nagkaroon tayo dito ng mga diseases like flu. Okay, just an example. And then, they also brought with them insects. Mga, ano daw, mga, uh, ano tawag with the vermins and other, you know, carriers of diseases that propagated here in our country. And that was uh, on a different uh, historical account because that was in the book of History of Diseases, how they came to, you know, get spread all over the world. Yun. Just like, ano, how corona came to spread here in the Philippines. Dalawang tao lang and then eventually dumami. Yun naman, carriers. Siguro wala din daga dito before, no? Walang mice. And then, nung dumating yung mga Spaniards, nagkaroon na tayo ng mice. Carriers of diseases. Who knows? Pati yung mga ano din, mga dengue, sila din nagdala niyan. Well, uh, it's a fascinating book to read on. Of course, you also have maps. Okay? Like I said, we the Philippines wasn't part of the map that the Spaniards created before. When they discovered us, yun, nalagay na tayo dun sa mapa. Glossaries of native words, nandun din. Geographic information and descriptions of the flora and fauna of the places they visited was clearly, uh, what do you call this? Uh, written as according to how Antonio Pigafetta saw it. Okay, so Pigafetta's travel travelogue contributed immensely to the enrichment of Philippine historiography. It also provided us a glimpse of the political, economic, and social condition of the islands in the Visayas during the 16th century. Kaya yun, kung ano man yung oral history that was carried on or transferred from one generation to the next, yung writings ni Pigafetta has clearly verified okay, all of those things. Kasi magkatugma eh. Okay? Yan. Yeah. Now, he described vividly the physical appearance, social life, religious beliefs, and cultural practices of the people in the islands of Samar, Leyte, and Cebu. So, if I am a foreigner and I haven't been to the Philippines and I am reading the publication of Antonio Pigafetta about, okay, about the people in the Philippines, I would also think that these people are backward because why are they dressing like that and I am fully dressed? Why do they worship pagan practice? Why, why do they do pagan practice? Okay? So, magkaiba yung point of view nila. Kaya doon na nag, ano, nagkaroon ng, yeah, probably you could say miscommunication or indifference na nag-start ng tawagin ng Filipinos as backward, ignorant, yan. So, actually, that's not the whole thing there. That's why you have to get to know your own history in order to correct those uh, people who are not Filipinos in thinking otherwise that Filipinos are like this or like that. Kasi hindi naman lahat eh. Okay? Especially sinabing, oh, Filipinos are monkey. Pag sinabing monkey kasi, Ano yan eh? uh, it's a degrading or rather a belittling description. Yan. Kasi monkeys are primitive. Yun. So if you have read Darwin's theory on evolution, yun dyan daw nag-originate ang man. So it took a very long time for monkeys to evolve. Okay, so now you get the point. Uh, instead of getting angry, you ano, you teach. Uh, but if they just said it jokingly out of the blue, then you also have to get into the mood, okay? But then you have to uh, teach them about Philippine history para makorrect yung way of thinking nila. Ganun lang yun. Okay? Just like, ano ba yung nakalagay yun sa ano, Mariam Dictionary? Uh, which president was that? It's not Corey. Forgot which president that was. Anyway, um, the attention of the writer of the dictionary was called up because the Filip the word Filipino there was uh, described or the meaning was placed as a you know house helper. Kaya yun teka lang Filipino house helper. Are Filipinos the only one who are house helpers? Yeah yun. It was stricken down, pinabago, pinatanggal. Okay, so that's one thing. 
Because we're not the only nationality who works a, as a house helper, okay, when we travel to other countries. And with respect to other countries, marami naman sila eh. So, ano, it's, it has got to be, you know, uh, corrected, ganun. Okay? Now, of course, it also contains data about the economic activities of the local fox. Okay, it gave us an eyewitness account of the death of Magellan in the Battle of Mactan. So now we have proof how Magellan died and it was in the hands of Lapu-Lapu's men and not Lapu-Lapu himself. Now, March 16, 1521, they came upon an island named Zamal or Samar. The following day, they decide to go to another island and that, that island is Homunu or Homunhon and they stay there for one week. March 31, a mass was held at Mazua or Limasawa. Siyempre, magkaiba yung language eh. Sa wala namang spelling nung time na yun eh. So, Pigafetta only wrote it as according to how he heard it. Yan. So, April 7, 1521, at noon, they entered the port of Cebu. Okay. April 14, 500 men were baptized, including the kings, and their names were also changed. The king of Mazua was named Johanni, the other king was named Don Carlo, and the other king was called Don Fernando in, other, in honor of the emperor's brother. On April 14, after dinner, they baptized the queen with some other women. So all in all, there were around 800 souls, men, women, and children that were baptized. And then here you have April 26, 1521. Okay. The chief of the island of Mactan sent his two sons to present two goats to the captain general and to say he would send him all that he had promised. But, hindi niya nagawa because of the other chief, si Lapu-Lapu, pinigilan. Okay? And Lapu-Lapu refused to obey the king of Spain. Now, he requested the captain to send him only one boatload of men the next night to fight Lapu-Lapu. Instead, Tatlong boatload of men ang pinadala niya. And they were very confident kasi modern armory, meron sila eh. Pati eh, kanyon, meron din. Eh, ano lang naman panlaban ng mga tao ni Lapu-Lapu noong time na yun. Di ba? Itak, yun lang. Okay? April 27, at midnight, 60 men of us set out and with the Christian king and some of the chief men reached Mak three hours before dawn. The captain did not wish to fight but sent messages to the Moro to the effect that if they would obey the king of Spain, they okay, recognize the Christian king as their sovereign, they will pay as our tribute. Okay, He would be their friend. Otherwise, they would wait to see how our lances would be wounded. Okay, the Moros replied, we had lances too. Ang meaning ng tribute na yun is that if we embrace and welcome the king, I mean, welcome the Spaniards openly and acknowledge the king of Spain as our sovereign, sila ang magbibigay sa mga Filipinos ng tribute as a means of, uh, you know, uh, compensation or I don't know how to term it. Tribute, tax kasi yung ibig sabihin ng tribute eh. Sila nang pumunta dito, sila na nag-colonize, sila pa magbabayad ng tribute, okay? Parang ginawa niya ng, ano, ng mga Americans before. They could not get into uh, Mindanao. So they had a meeting with all of the sultans, the kings of, uh, yeah, the sultans, the royal family. They paid tribute so that they could have free entry in Mindanao. And then later on, pinutol na nila yon in 1902. Di na sila nagbayad. Okay? Di na sila ng tribute. Okay? A war waged. A war was waged in uh, Sulu. There was a massacre, and then eventually, yun, everyone fell into the hands of the Americans. Anyway, we will be discussing more about that when we talk about the American history or the American colonization. Now, when the morning came, 49 of us leaped into the water, while the 11 remained behind to guard the boats. Thus, the fight began. Still on the same day, uh, they fought more than one hour, refusing to retire further. An Indian hurled a bamboo spear into the captain's face. When the natives saw that, they hurled themselves upon him. 
Okay? They wounded him. He turned his back so many times, whether we were all in the boat. Thereupon, beholding him dead, we, the wounded, retreated. So actually, the person that uh, Pigafetta was talking about was Magellan. He eh. Okay? Now, let's skip this part here. Uh, for the national motto of the Philippines, okay, isang bansa, isang diwa. That's uh, one spirit, uh, one country, one spirit. So this was the motto from 1978 to 1986. Okay? And uh, by 1998 to present, na bago na, maka-Diyos, maka maka at maka -bansa. Tagalog for godly, humane, miniature, lover, and nationalistic. It could also be translated as for God, people, nature, and country. Or for the love of God, people, nature, and country. Yeah. Okay, so, yep, that's it. For uh, what history is, is primary sources as well. So. This is a rough background. Okay, now for next meeting, actually I was supposed to include the, you know, start off with talking to you about the Philippines itself, our country, kind of geogra geography. Yeah, we will have a review on that. Okay. But uh, there were some slides that were not necessary to be there, so I will have to edit it and remove it. Otherwise, everything is going to be repetitive. Okay. Now, for next meeting, can you do an advanced reading on uh, presentation number four? Yeah. Presentation number four. I will just remove a few slides, but it's still the same thing. Okay. So, everything about Philippines. Para some background on the pre colonial era. Yeah. Okay. So, do you guys have any questions? No. Wala naman. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we will stop uh, there and next meeting we'll continue our discussion on presentation number four. Okay. So thank you so much, guys, for your time and have a good evening ahead of you. And thank it's you not yet, it's not yet in bright space, but it's in the drive folder. G classroom folder. And I also place in right space the G drive. It's my personal G drive. Okay, in that personal G drive, nandun na lahat pati videos and small clips. Sa folder in G classroom is more on presentation. So I suggest you access both. Okay? So bright space, um, Isa isa yung entry niya and, and still hindi siya pwede bulk. Okay, e maramihan yun. So I actually and I actually uploaded everything from prelim to finals na yun. Okay. But as I was told, we will only be using bright space for our exams, quizzes, yan. Okay, so I hope that clarifies everything. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. Have a good night ahead. Thank you, thank you, po. thank you, 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 thank you,